Welcome to News Now. I'm your host, Maribel Carvajal de Salazar. Today we have Ellen O'Brien Cushman, our town clerk, and we're going to talk more about the town election April 4th. Welcome. Thank you. Lovely to be here. Nice to see you. Please uh, tell us what do the voters need to know before they cast their ballots? So there are a couple of exciting things about the April 4th, 2023 town election. First, everyone should know who's a voter that there are a lot of races and there are a couple of questions on the ballot. So it's a very active election this time. Second, we will have many new changes happening at the voting experience at each one of our polling precincts. And we'd love to talk a little bit about that with you. Yes, what are those changes? So first, uh, we will be showing videos and offering those on our website so the voters might be a little bit more informed before they go and actually cast their ballots. When they arrive, instead of using the old-fashioned paper books uh, with people making check marks for voters that have cast their ballots, there will be an electronic poll book. The reason we've introduced this technology is because it will allow us to do faster, more efficient check-in, and uh, it's pretty secure. It's very secure. It replaces all those old papers. And uh, very importantly for me, it makes sure that at the end of the night, we have very accurate uh, tallies, and we should be able to get our results on a typical election very quickly. So, um, you know, there are a lot of reasons for us to have switched there. We've been using electronic poll books, a little bit different form, in early voting for a number of years, and we finally made the leap. What are you looking forward to this improvement? Our election workers are thrilled. We have given training to them, and at the end of the night at 9 o'clock or 8 o'clock, it's really hard to be counting all the number of voters on each one of the pages and then have to tally out sometimes thousands of voters. So, um, you know, they're, they're looking forward to the sort of ease of that. They also are looking forward to the accuracy. When they put in the first three letters of someone's last name and the third, first three letters of a first name, all of the possibilities will come up. And so that will allow us to catch any duplicates if there are any and uh, make sure that we get the right voter. And uh, the other thing that's really important to know is that we're putting our entire voting list into these electronic uh, poll books. What does that mean to the average voter? It means if you show up at the wrong place to vote, the person who is at the table will be able to tell you not just that you aren't a voter at that precinct, but instantly tell you where you are currently registered to vote, give you the address, and let you uh, be on your way quickly instead of having to wait to have someone check with us at town hall. So that is a tremendous benefit for voters and the election workers. Yes. And where are the questions this time um, on the election? So uh, there are all of the town meeting and uh, town-wide races, and at the very end, there are two ballot questions, um, and they, everything is on the one side of the ballot. It's not a two-sided ballot this time. It's just a very long piece of paper. Um, the first question is called Question 1, and it is, uh, Shall the town of Belmont be allowed to exempt from the provisions of Proposition 2 and 1 half, so-called, the amounts required to pay for the bonds issued in order to pay for costs of designing, demolishing, constructing, originally equipping and furnishing the Belmont Rink and Sports Facility located at 345 Concord Avenue in Belmont and all costs incidental or related thereto, otherwise known as the rink debt exclusion. Okay. Uh, and the second question, known as question two, is <clears throat> shall the town vote to have its elected town treasurer and collector of taxes become an appointed town treasurer and collector of taxes for the town. And both of those, the voters will be able to cast only a yes or a no vote. All right. And we also have some town-wide positions that are going to be filled. We do. Which uh, one are those? Yes. So we have a town moderator position, which is a one-year position. We have a select board member, uh, the town treasurer, which will, in this case, only, there are no candidates on the ballot, so that person would be elected by write-in. Uh, campaign and uh, Board of Assessors. We have both a three-year position and a one-year position. We have for the Board of Cemetery Commissioners, the Board of Health, Housing Authority, Trustees of the Public Library. We have two people going to be elected and Municipal Light Board. Uh, and finally, the School Committee. There are three candidates running uh, to seek two positions. Mm -hmm. Correct. And then there are all the town meeting member slots. That was my next question. Which one are the, the precincts? So in every one of the precincts, there are 12 people who will be elected for three years. 
and we do have enough people running except for in one of the precincts uh, to cover that. In fact, this is a really huge year for us because in several of the precincts, most of them, we have about 16 to 20 candidates running for 12 positions. So it's wow. wonderful for the voters to be able to have those selections. And uh, the League of Women Voters has printed a voter guide and has had it delivered to every household in Belmont. We encourage people to go and uh, read that and carry that with them if they want to, to the polls so that they're making informed choices. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the other people uh, who are running, we also have sort of partial terms, which means that there was a vacancy that we need to fill, and those are in precincts four, five, and six. So there's a second race in each one of those. Oh, nice. So thank you to all of our neighbors for putting the work on That's that. That's right. And when there's not enough um, people on it, how, how does it work? So if there's no candidate running, for example, or if you just don't feel like you're choosing the amongst the candidates who have names on the ballot, in Massachusetts you're allowed to create a write-in, and all that takes is to fill in the little bubble and uh, write the name of the person. So as long as they are a registered voter of Belmont, they are eligible to be um, elected. All right. And you think you will have all the results on that night? So here's the other great change that was made. We aren't just changing the check-in process, we are checking, changing the actual voting process. So people call them the voting machines. They're actually called electronic vote tabulators. And we, after putting in a capital request in 2018, finally I decided to make the leap and say we were ready. Uh, it took a while to do that because I wanted to make sure that we were meeting all of the cybersecurity standards and I let all of the other towns and cities nationwide do all the sort of checking, testing, and requiring of updates. So it's very proven technology at this point. Uh, so it's called a DS-200 and it's produced by Election System and Software. It's a very, it's a national elections company. And uh, it's really a wonderful machine. The w couple of things that the voters will notice most, uh, most will be that the machine will actually give them direct information. So a voter will put his or her, they'll mark their ballot the exact same way as they always have, fill in the bubbles or write in the name and fill in the bubble. And then they'll put it into the machine and the machine has a little screen and it will say, your vote has been counted. Or it will say, there's a problem with your vote perhaps that mm -hmm. you and you put a blank ballot into the into the box and that you're still allowed to do that in Massachusetts but it's telling you a message back that said would you like to have another chance at this ballot likewise one of the things that we're concerned about and always alert to is when we have 12 positions for example running for town meeting and we have 16 or 20 people running that's pretty unusual for us. So there will be some uh, members of the public who are voters who will check off more than the required number of 12. And we do want to make sure that they have an opportunity to have their votes count. So uh, we will be, the machine will actually tell them, hey, you voted for too many people in this race. Would you like us to return the ballot for you and then you can get another ballot and vote again? Or would you like me to count what I can count on this machine? And the voter makes that choice. So the voter gets to push, you know, uh, cast my ballot or return it and let me vote again. So wow. that's, that will uh, give a little bit more uh, assistance to the voter directly. And they have control of their own votes. That is a very cool machine. It's great. So anything else you would like to tell our neighbors? So uh, two things are de deadlines that are coming up, and uh, one of them is in a week. Uh, so March 24th is the last day to register to vote and be qualified to vote and cast your ballot on April 4th. That's important, and anyone who chooses to do so may fill out a form. They're on my website, on the town's website, uh, which is belmont-ma.gov. Check off the town clerk and look for register to vote. Pretty simple. Even simpler, the state has created a portal for all kinds of things having to do with elections and voting. And it's very simple to remember. It's uh, www, of course, but it's voteinma.com. And you can choose to uh, file for an absentee ballot, file for a vote-by-mail ballot, register to vote, check your voting status, find out where your polling location is. It's all in one location. So it's really um, very powerful. So that's uh, the first date, voter registration. March 24th, there's another date, March 28th, for vote by mail ballots and absentee applications, any of those. Uh, those are due by 5 p.m. to the town clerk. I have to have it in my hand. It doesn't have to do with postmarks. It has everything to do with me having the information in my hand. So I have time to mail you the ballot and you'll be able to vote it, effectively get the ballot back to me by election night at 8 p.m. on April 4th. That's a lot of great information. And is there anything that you would like to share to the first-time voters? 
Yes, welcome. Make sure you get your sticker. <laughs> it's a big deal. Everybody, uh, adults really turn into children when it comes to voting because they all want that sticker. Uh, just, uh, you know, I, I think the best thing to do is to try not to be nervous. Feel free to identify yourself to the poll worker that this is your first time through the system. And remember, this is a wonderful time to be a first time voter because everyone is going to be experiencing these poll books and this voting machine for the first time. So everyone is going to be there together. So just ask for help if you need help. We're always, we have uh, a lot of workers who are there and that's their job to help you get through the process, not to guide you to tell you how to vote, but tell you what it takes for you to vote in terms of the process. All right, thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you. That was it for today. I'm your host, Maribel Carvajal de Salazar. Remember, go vote, election April 4th. Thank you. <laughs>